catchy as Bay. I heard they arrested one of the Phantom Thieves. No way. I didn't expect him to commit suicide. He's a murderer. He deserved to die. We can finally breathe easy now. He killed himself, huh? I guess we'll never know his, motiv his motivation. I'm exhausted. Feels like my consciousness is about to fade away. <sighs> hey, are you alright? Don't fall asleep until we reach our destination. Are you listening? Should let me take a nap? Could this be the effect of the drug wearing off? The memories I thought were gone are starting to come back. Is this not voice acted? Are you listening? Yeah, I am. Anyway, we need to talk about how to get out of this situation. Kutaba's monitoring of Akechi's phone has confirmed it. He did indeed have an ulterior motive. It turns out he's Bayonetta. It's on a completely different level than just that. Not only was he trying to frame us, but he was the true culprit behind the mental shutdowns. His offer to assist us was simply a plot to frame the Phantom Thieves and kill Akira-kun. If we go and assist his palace as he suggests, we'll likely be met by a large ambush of police forces. To think he would be this far gone. I know now what it means to feel a chill down my spine. Furthermore, he wishes to bring a police squad from reality into the palace. If the eight of us can enter at once, it's not inconceivable to think a larger group is possible. He may even be able to bring in vehicles or other special pieces of equipment. So this really was just a setup to shift the blame onto us. He made us go after Okumura, then once we triggered the change of heart, he killed him. And he told us he had seen the true culprit, but it was him the entire time. The whole time he was working with Makoto's sister, he was really just some homicidal maniac. Come on, we gotta take that scum Akechi down. Isn't that recording? We got enough proof to do it. No, Akechi is merely a tool. His orders come from elsewhere, the grand mastermind behind this all. An unimaginable fiend capable of arranging the murder of a suspect of a police station. Unless we find out who that is, we will continue being targeted, even if we defeat Akechi. But, what means do we have of learning his identity? We'll have to make Akechi say it. Though once we do, that mastermind will likely eliminate us. I think that will be the case eventually, regardless of whether or not we learn his identity. The only reason it hasn't happened yet is because we're an easy target to blame for his crimes. If he realizes that he's no longer that's no longer possible and abandons that plan, he may opt to kill us immediately. Dang it. So we don't got a choice but to do what that scum suggested. But if we go into the palace as told, Akira will get arrested and then murdered by Akechi. Palace. The palace. Actually, there's something I'd like to say regarding... Aha! We can use the palace to our advantage. What's this all of a sudden? There's a way. A way to get past Akechi and get the mastermind to lay off of us, all while learning his identity. Really? You gotta be kidding me. If he wants to kill Akira, why not let him? That is, inside the palace. Yes, we would have him kill the cognitive Akira-kun, all the while believing he killed the real one. Yeah, that's it. It seems that's our only option. Listen close, everyone. I have a plan for how we can carry this operation out. What? Ever since the death of their teenage leader, the Phantom Thieves have fallen silent. However, the police intend on continuing this investigation until the case is fully solved. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to finish a few things at work. Where are they? Waiting upstairs. Go tell them to come on down. I'm gonna fetch him. Even Coffee Daddy is in. You're her sister, correct? Makoto told me everything. Futaba-chan, I'm sorry that I caused you so much trouble this past summer. Eh, it's ancient history now. Man, that goddamn detective. Look who's here. <laughs> hey, you big bastard. How 
have you been? Ah, you know, I was dead for a little while. Hung out in a mine prison. Good times. Ghostly. You're not floating. It truly is a relief to see your face. I bet that moron Akechi don't even know we tricked him yet. Still, how'd you pull this off? Isn't this guy considered dead? You weren't told anything? I heard my sister brought him here, though. Yeah, she came over in a taxi, dumped him off, and told me to keep him safe. It was right after they announced he had died, too. Almost gave me a heart attack. I didn't have time to explain. Hey, shouldn't we tell boss what really happened? Really, just like, tell someone what really happened so that I know what really happened. We wanted to make our enemy believe the leader of the Phantom Thieves was dead. What? What we did was make that enemy kill his fake in the metaverse. Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Enemy? Fake? What are you talking about? The true culprit behind all these incidents set us up. Our goal here was to determine their identity. True culprit? I see. So you guys were going up against someone else. It was Goro Akechi. You knew beforehand that he was the traitor, didn't you? Yeah, it was like incredibly obvious. So obvious that I hoped it wasn't true, but it was. What a shock. Akechi himself gave us the chance to strike back. He made one fatal mistake. He talked about pancakes. Couldn't you have just said from the beginning that Akechi was the real culprit? That wasn't something we could simply bring up. We couldn't have you suspect Akechi. Besides, neither you nor the other investigators would have believed something like that, would you? True. Akechi was credited with the arrest of the Phantom Thieves. Not even I would think he was the culprit. In other words, you left him alone on purpose. That was a bold move. God, I can't keep up with any of this stuff. Uh, wait, so what was this mistake Akechi made? What did he do? He slipped up in regards to Morgana's voice. You mean a cat? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Morgana can talk. Uh, uh, sorry, was that supposed to be a joke? Oh, our apologies. That's completely true. Feel like a lot of you are coming dangerously close to disrespecting Coffee Daddy right now, and you know that we don't do that here. You surprised? Does that mean... He said something just now as well? But you don't understand him, do you? That's how it was for all of us at first, too. When you're in the metaverse, Mona talks like a normal person. Once you hear that and your brain realizes he can actually talk, you start to understand him in reality. It's a change in cognition, most likely. Thanks to Akechi's lame acting, we figured out something was up. Are you really going to flashback me this again? When we talked to Akechi at the school festival, he was acting like he just realized Mona could talk. But we already saw him drop a mega hint about it way earlier. <laughs> mega hint. Oh, I know a place. I want to go to that huge pancake looking place we passed on the way here. Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. Are you actually kidding me right now? Mona was the only one who was talking about a pancake. What? Not only is this the way they go to make it realize like he's the traitor for them to realize that he's going to betray them, but they remembered that conversation from like months ago? What? That's so stupid. Akechi'd already been in the metaverse by then. 
And since he was lying to us about that, we assumed he had a hidden motive behind contacting us. It seemed odd upon further thought. His reaction to my pancake comment was an honest one, after all. Yeah, it was really stupid and basically just plot convenience. That said, we weren't so naive to overlook something like that. <laughs> that's not being naive, that's being a human being. What are you taught? Who on earth would remember something that benign and random and then link it together like this? Oh, he just now realized Mor Morgana could talk. Wait a minute! Seven months ago, when we were in a hallway at that one location, Morgana said something about pancakes. And I remember very clearly that no one else said the word pancakes. And then Akechi mentioned pancakes, so obviously he's a liar. Who came up with this garbage? That's why we asked Vitabachan to wiretap his phone. I pretended to be interested in checking the phone out, but I was actually planting my app. My heart was pounding while I was doing it, though. Now that part, that was smooth. Good play. Even that ace detective could never have imagined a program being installed so quickly. Futaba's quirky nature proved to be a great help. That was just an act! After a few days of listening, this confirmed his betrayal. Then I'll guide the police into her palace and have them catch the phantom thieves in the act. That would be the only way to arrest them, given their methods. I'll deal with them after that. Let me see. We could say he stole the guard's gun and committed suicide during his imprisonment. How about that? Public security questioning will occur on the first day. And with that room, my task will be simple. Is this for real? Yes, the guard will be one of ours. We'll have to eliminate him after to destroy the evidence, though. So they plan to get rid of that guard from the beginning. Well then, I will make the arrangements the day after the arrest. And thus, the dangerous criminal responsible for the mass mental shutdowns shall end his own life. When he does, you will become a great hero who saved Japan from evil. As will I, of course. I knew he was acting strangely, but to think he was this far gone. He's no ace detective. Akechi is the perpetrator behind the mental shutdown crimes. On top of that, there's someone else commanding Akechi. Someone with great authority. So great that they can order an assassination in a police station. That's why we had to make a move before they did. I see. I still don't understand how you killed a cognitive version of Akira, though. We baited Akechi into Sis's palace, making him dispose of our leader's fake, but think he killed him. How is it a leader's fake, though? It's in Psy's palace, so it has to be that Psy thought up that cognitive version of Akira. But how did she think up the version of Akira and also... Also have him tell her all of the... What? Can you elaborate on that in more detail? What exactly happened in my cognitive world? I can't wait to hear what kind of explanation they have for this. This is why I wanted face cam. My face literally looks the same. I promise you, my face looks like nothing special. Like, I don't make expressions and stuff. That's another reason I don't face cam. I don't make expressions and stuff when I'm playing games. It doesn't happen. We're sorry for using you without your permission. Your palace had all the conditions we needed. What conditions? First... We required a place inside the cognitive world that was the same as in reality. That place is based on the real world after all. Anywhere that's not warped looks just like normal. That's why nobody but the person who uses the nav even realizes they're in the metaverse. 
Back with Kamoshida? We came in from the station without even noticing. Yeah, not until we got to school. You totally can't tell the difference if there ain't any distortions around. We had already investigated Nijima-san's palace when Makoto brought the suggestion to us. I was seriously impressed by that suggestion. To be honest, I didn't quite understand it, but I went along with it. Yeah, it was, it was a great idea, whatever you're talking about. Yeah, it's good we have her heading up our operations. Makoto is normally so calm as well, but once her mind is set, she gets oddly impulsive. I did have a bit of a rivalry forming with Akechi, but I just couldn't contain myself anymore once you became a target, sis. The reason I joined the Phantom Thieves was to heal your heart, after all. My own achievements were all that mattered to me. I was desperate. <sighs> I wasn't myself at all. I'm sorry I couldn't see that. That goes for the both of us. We heard from Mako-chan that you were going to do the interrogation, Nijima-san. And regarding its location, I take it you used the data from my laptop? I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on. There were two things we were able to confirm while we were checking the metaverse. First, our clothes didn't change when we were down in the interrogation room. That was loud. Jonathan, thank you for subscribing with Twitch Prime for four months in a row. I appreciate it, man. I'm going to replay that audio since that went off during it. There were two things we were able to confirm while we were checking the metaverse. First, our clothes didn't change when we were down in the interrogation room. Second, the scenery and details outside of the palace proper were the same as in the real world. Once we heard that from Makoto, we secretly went to check it out without a catchy knowing. There was also one more thing we absolutely needed to make this work. A perfect cognitive replica of him in the Metaverse's interrogation room. Since he had yet to be caught, though, there obviously wouldn't be anyone in that room. Once we saw the casino guests and police officers, we were convinced this would work. They looked no different from actual living people. After that, we just had to work our way into the palace like usual, while keeping it catchy in the dark. Everything went as planned up until we defeated Sis's shadow. However, it was then that we were met with a terrifying, unexpected police ambush. As a result, even though we managed to grab the treasure, we couldn't get it out of the metaverse. Except that was all an act. We had prepared an empty briefcase beforehand and merely acted like we were taking the treasure. This was because we knew the police would be coming for us. We made sure before the operation that the police would be waiting to ambush us. Wait, 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 wait. How did you already have a briefcase ready to go? You didn't know what the treasure looked like until you got there in time? Like, you didn't know what it looked like until you got the treasure, I thought. And just as expected, he totally took the bait. 